Welcome to Truck Company Operations Commercial Ventilation. Ventilation, the systematic removal and replacement of heated air, smoke, and gases from a structure with cooler air. Types of ventilation include horizontal, hydraulic, natural, pressurized, and vertical. Roof reports are an important part of the ventilation operations. Things that need to be reported on are the roof type, whether it's flat, a bridge truss, an arch type, whether it's bow, truss, or lamella, a sawtooth, a gable, or hip roof. The conditions present, structural conditions include whether it's stable or unstable, smoke conditions, where the smoke is coming from, the velocity, the volume, the color, and density are all things to consider. Fire conditions, whether you have fire through the roof, auto ignition above vented areas, or if you have fire on the roof or roofing material itself is on fire. Additionally, the absence of fire is an important note to make. Structural information is important as well. Location of firewalls or breaks between occupancies. Heavy roof loads and locations of those heavy roof loads, including AC units, mechanical systems, rooms, structures, or photovoltaic systems are important. The conditions in the attic, whether you have nothing, whether you have smoke, or you have fire in the attic, is important. The conditions of the fire in the attic, whether it's smoldering, if it's a running fire, or fully involved, are important to let the IC and other units on scene know. Commercial roofs. Here we have Costco on each H Street. You can see that it's a very large, flat roof construction with a multitude of skylights available for us to use if necessary. This structure has a fire protection system in it, and it does have smoke curtains. Walmart Supercenter in Eastlake. This is also a flat roof. You can notice the dead loads on there, including a very large photovoltaic system. This would not be an ideal operation for commercial ventilation operations that we would normally use on a lightweight panelized roof construction. Strip Mall on Main Street. Uh, this is going to be a lightweight panelized roof construction, flat roof on a single story commercial structure. As you can see, there's going to be dead loads on there. This does have a mansard that runs the exterior of the building and it has a parapet. Access to this would be ideal to use the aerial ladder so that we can get over that mansard and onto the actual roof structure itself. You can see the dead loads that are on this roof would, would be a part of the roof report initially and then once we've done our commercial ventilation operations a follow-up roof report would be pending. Strip Mall Warehouse, Main Street and 4th Avenue in Chula Vista. This again is a single story commercial roof. This is a lightweight roof construction, panelized roof construction. This does have a small parapet and it also has firewalls. This type of roof construction and structure lends itself to both offensive and defensive commercial ventilation operations. Note the dead loads, note the firewalls, note the small parapet access points on the Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta sides. If you notice on the Charlie side of this structure, there is a storage unit that backs up to it. Downtown 3rd Avenue area of Chula Vista, you'll have a multitude of roofs, both commercial, conventional, and lightweight roof construction. You'll have arch trusses, you'll have flat roofs, you'll have bridge trusses, you could have um, a number of different roofs right next to each other. With the lightweight panelized roof construction on some of these flat roofs, you'll notice some of the dead loads again, you'll notice parapets, and you'll notice that they do have mansards. Access to some of these areas is going to be limited. Identifying different roof sizes and access points to them is going to be paramount when making your roof operation decisions and pre-planning. On the Charlie side of these structures in that alleyway, access will be limited for aerial operations due to power lines and overhead electrical hazards. Along with that, you'll have a limited area to be able to set up the aerial operations. Actions taken are also an important part of roof reports. An offensive heat hole needs to be coordinated with attack. How large the hole is and where the hole is placed is important. Defensive strip operations are also important whether you're going to be doing those or not. Additionally, 
once your holes have been put in place, exiting the roof should be an essential part of a roof report. SCBA swaps are important to note, retooling, and when you're ready for a new assignment. Special information about the roof, whether it's an unusual shape of the building, an unusual roof, it has unstable areas, collapsed areas, or if you need additional personnel or equipment to complete your tasks. The effect of ventilation is important. Coordinated with the TAC, advise the number of ventilation holes that will be placed, the improvement of interior conditions is part of that coordinated effort with the TAC. Additional holes or extending holes if necessary. Ensuring that attic conditions after your ventilation operations have been put in place to note smoke, fire, or clear attic. Part of the follow-up roof report should also include if the roof is still stable, if it is unstable, if you ran into issues while cutting your ventilation holes, or if there's instability after the holes were cut. Additionally, noting the, your next actions, whether extending ventilation, moving to do another ventilation operation, or exiting the roof for reassignment. Crew setup for Pierce straight truck aerial operations. Crew setup for Pierce Tiller Aerial Operations.
ventilation tool cache should include, for commercial ventilation, a minimum of two rubbish hooks, two chainsaws, the saw bag should be at a location that is easily accessible, a tick for at least two members, and box lights. Additional considerations should include a hose line, additional ladders, a rescue saw, and extra blade. The offensive stack for what we are teaching the probationary firefighters in the academy and what they will be tested on at their eight month exam should look like this. The first or lead hook should be the most experienced member other than the company officer. They will lead out to the objective. It can be a firefighter or engineer based on crew makeup. The number two position should be your lead sawyer, usually a senior firefighter or a firefighter with a good amount of roof operations under their belt. Your third position should be your second hook. This person follows out and then leads opposite side of the objective for the louver and loo. The fourth person stays heads up, keeps the second saw running, and can be a company officer. The ventilation operations should commence as follows. The lead hook will lead out. The tool swap will commence once you're at your objective. The tool swap will occur with the tool coming up on the inside and, going, and the other tool going out on the outside. The lead hook will take the lead on the initial saw, completing the ID cut, the head cut, the down cut, and the bottom cut on the louver and loo operation. The second hook will lead to the mirror side from the beam on a purlin that has been identified. Tool swap will again take place at your objective tool will come up on the inside, out on the outside. The second hook will then plunge into the head cut from the lead sawyer, complete the down cut, and complete the bottom cut. This process will be repeated for the identified or determined number of offensive heat holes necessary for the operation. Commercial ventilation operations lend themselves to multiple ways to accomplishing the same task. In this case, a secondary offensive stack can be used. You will still have a lead hook, which would still be your most experienced member. They will lead out to the objective, and it can be a firefighter or an engineer. Your second position will be your lead sawyer, usually a senior firefighter. Your third position will be your second hook. They will follow out and then lead opposite side of the objective for the louver and loo operation. This would be a company officer and they will stay heads up. Your fourth position would be your second sawyer and they'll keep their saw running. The order of operations for the second stack where the lead hook will still lead out, they'll create a safe area ahead of the offensive heat hole and once the offensive heat holes are cut, they will clear the offensive heat holes. The lead sawyer will stay in their position. There will be no tool swap in this operation. They will perform the ID cut the head cut, the down cut, and the bottom cut. Then they will repeat as needed for the number of holes that have been identified to be cut. The order of operations continuing with the second stack option. The second hook will be the company officer. The company officer will lead to the mirror side from the beam onto the purlin. The company officer will create a safe area ahead of the offensive heat hole, and then the company officer and the lead hook will clear the offensive heat holes once they have been put in place. The second sawyer will plunge their cut 
into the head cut from the lead sawyer, perform their down cut, bottom cut, and repeat the process as necessary to perform the necessary number of offensive heel holes. Why multiple options? This allows company officers and their crews to have flexibility in how operations are performed. This can be tailored to crew specifics and operational needs. The first option that we visited was with a tool swap technique. This has been taught in the academy setting, keeps a company officer in the rear and in a heads up position. It keeps less experienced personnel sandwiched between more experienced personnel and personnel stay behind the cuts at all times. The second option allows personnel to move past. The personnel stay on the tools that they have brought up and are assigned to, keeps more experienced personnel on hooks, it creates a good division of labor, and it allows for air management. These are only two options, but there are more out there and company officers should have the final say in how they operate with their crew. Commercial ventilation operations. Just things to consider. Vent for life versus vent for fire. Vent for life is a ventilation operation to increase survivability for occupants and for firefighters. Sometimes it's done away from the fire. It may increase the size of the fire and fire activity. Personnel on the fire ground should be made aware of the operation prior to it being put in place, and the IC must have final say on this operation. This operation is done primarily, or can be done, in a center hallway multifamily residential occupancy. This is done to create a safe area for occupants to exit a structure with limiting the amount of smoke and toxins and heat and fire that they can be exposed to. Vent for fire is what is done primarily. It's a coordinated effort between attack and ventilation. It should be done over the same floor as the fire. It's done to increase visibility, to create better access to the seat of the fire, and allows for faster fire extinguishment. <laughs> 